Welcome back. Now, uh, Falu Agoy is the first vice president of PEN Nigeria and the former chairman of the Association of Nigerian Authors, Anna Lagos. He is also the winner of BBC Poetry Competition and several other awards, including the Professor Wale Shoinka Award for Literature and a host of others. He's a creative and a kind of academic poet and a writer. Uh, also a critic, a literary activist, editor, publisher, and teacher. He is the author of I Know the Smell of My Lover's Skin. That's his book right here. It's a collection of poems and, of course, the focus of our book review this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, so with all that, you know, all the, your background and everything, you should be a professor of literature by now. <laughs> well, I... I Quite a number of books you've written, actually. Yeah, written it, a few on, on yeah, it, well. it's a reflection of my passion you know, yes. for for creativity, for poetry. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, going straight to the book, um, from your preface, you said that the book is uh, is an offering to the god of love. So, is that uh, the Greek god Eros, or or uh, the god that we know? Uh, of course, we know that um, in the Bible it says. Yeah, God, that, is, that God, God is, is love. love. Yes, uh, but that's really a metaphorical uh, uh, expression, you know. In, 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 uh, you know, and I want to put in that the, the collection is really about love, hmm. which is the essence of life. And then when we, you say love, um, a lot of people really want to really pin it down to romantic love, hmm. just that. But the ex the, the Publication is actually based on the concept of love in all of its ramifications. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it could be that relationship between a man and, and his spouse or lover. Could be between um, the political class and the masses. Could mm -hmm. be between the government and the people. You know, yeah. At least li love is that thing mm -hmm. that really binds everybody. At least all the components of society. Yeah, I like that expansive um, expression. But of course. You're not going to blame anyone if they look at the cover of the book uh, yeah, and they that, see... That, that's just metaphor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's a metaphor for, you know, the connection between, you know, two the, separate... The, the romance subjects. between uh, two components of society. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so um, the book itself, I mean, it's a collection of poetry. Um, I mean, I used to write poems myself oh, okay. until... As you got carried away with... Well, I wasn't making money from writing poetry at the time, but you know, I, I know things have changed now a little bit in, in the country as we're, we're accepting of uh, more writers and uh, writers look like they're making some good money now. But uh, going into um, the poems themselves, there has to be an inspiration behind some of the poems you write because I know that you, and when you're expecting, when you're talking about love, like you said, it captures many different aspects. Yeah. There's one of your poems that talks about God is love. Yeah. And when one, when, when one sees it, it's almost like, you know, you remember again what the Bible says about, about love. Yeah. But you captured it from a different um, angle. Can you just um, share with us on that? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, this is my sixth uh, publication, you know, my sixth collection. And, and um, I, I, so many people who have read me, you know, um, tend to, to describe me as a political poet, you know, thinking that my poetry is just about politics and all that. And uh, forgetting the fact that it is passion, it is passion in the first place that drives poetry, that drives creativity in you, that moves you to write, to want to really interrogate your environment, to ask questions and things. So this particular uh, uh, publication, um, became what it is, you know, something about the collection of love poems because mm. I meant to express the fact that I'm not just a political ri writer, you mm. know, not just a political poet. Yes. A lot of the works there are really political, really, mm. uh, but metaphorically presented as, as love poems. Yes. And so it's still the same thing that we're going back to the basics that at least it is still love, that it is passion that drives you to want to react to your environment, to want to really um, talk to the reality of your existence and, and of your environment. And so that's, so God's love is just still a metaphor yeah. uh, for really uh, what the, the engagement is about. Mm. It, it's about, it's still the same thing that I've done over and over, but then maybe the anger that really pushed me, you know, they brought out the other publications uh, have become has become controlled in this mm. one that you just sit back and say, okay, yeah, so let's let's discuss this issue with love. Put love on the table, even while you are 
criticizing, doing what you used to do, mm. you know, put law on the table and then get people. All right, All right. so let's, let's talk about um, this poem, um, Daddy's Pet. Okay. Um, and we're, we're going from love now, from God now to, to Daddy, uh, we're coming back to the earth. Yeah. So it says, I call him Dad, he calls me Pet. Mm. Yes, Pet like parrot, pigeon, puppy, kitten. What, what, were, what was going on through your mind when you were writing this poem? Were you talking about your own father or um, your connection with your, your children, if you have any? Yeah. Um, well, poetry is actually um, a product of, of a personal experience, you know, that might become globalized later, and mm -hmm. so many people might react to it or even appropriate it. Um, I, I, I tap inspiration from my environment. Mm -hmm. um, that poem is my, um, my, my, my fossilized reaction to what was happening in Nigeria as at the time I, I really wrote that work because mm. um, there was um, a kind of conflict between a couple, between the man, an elderly man and his young wife. Mm. And, and then so, and then it became, a, well, almost a, a global um, affair. Yeah. Uh, so it drew attention to, to our country at that, mm. that time. And so uh, that was what actually inspired that, that poem. And I now <coughs> took a closer look at the situation, you know, thinking of the age differences and some other differences uh, between the two uh, uh, people involved. And I was trying to now um, find out at least poetically what could have led to that um, global disgrace, yeah. so to speak. When they, a wife is saying something about the husband in public, and the husband is talking back, and so on. So, so that was the, the so it, the poem still is the metaphor built on that messy uh, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if we if you're going to look at this book now, I mean, it's a text of probably over a hundred poems. Uh, Eighty-three. Eighty-three poems. I mean, so which one of them is your favorite? And would you read just like one paragraph to us? Um, well, uh <laughs> Well, um, I wouldn't say I have a favorite because yeah. it's like a father having a favorite, favorite son or, or, or daughter. So, mm. that, but less, uh, I think I just want to read a very short one. Um, it, uh, it's on page 51. It's 51. entitled With Love. With Love. So, uh, that uh, we actually say something about at least the totality of this publication, yes. the kind of love that we're talking about here. At least, uh, this is one aspect. Okay, so, of this one for Dele Giwa. For Dele Giwa. Yeah. The last time a man got a mail from a smiling ruler, he found his flesh swimming in a lake of fire, blown to tiny pieces via a letter missile, served by one gentle palace sentry, smiling, sewer, sowing sorrow with love. Wow. Wow. So the book is I Know the Smell of My Lover's Skin. That's it right here by Folu Agoy, the prolific poet. Thank you for joining us this morning. Sir. It's now time for Harry and Mike to bring us entertainment news. Okay, definitely someone who I don't know. Do you know the smell of a mother's skin? I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. You're welcome to about the best part of the show. I call it entertainment in entertainment for you quidnunks out there. And of course, we've got the man himself who does entertainment <laughs> like white and rice. It's <laughs> Harry T in the house. You're welcome. Thank you very Great much. Great to have you. Yes. How's your morning been so far? Very good, very good. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right. So, yes. what do you have for us today? First story is Young Six. Now, Young Six is a Nigerian rapper. And he, he allegedly spent 3.9 million naira partying and he showed off the receipt on his Snapchat. Now, Young Six <laughs> is no stranger to spending money okay. on, online. You know, um, in March, he talked about someone who had helped him out when he started, when he was trying to be a, a rapper. Okay. And the guy gave him 10,000 naira, and he gave the guy $10,000 to start his career. So um, he is, wow. he is um, that guy that spends money you know, all the time. So there's something very lavish about you know, no, but then if it's thing. If it's giving back to someone who spent some money on me when I was growing up, I think that's cool. That's good enough. But then yeah. spending 3.8 but but it could also be publicity for you know he had two new videos out this week in the past one week he has had two new videos out this you're week. right so yeah maybe he's trying to promote his music videos Who by knows? doing by pulling off a stunt like we're that we're talking about him right now so people <laughs> just go oh young six check out him on youtube and you know so yeah that, he just that, that uh, released a video with uh with dice, Dyson, Dyson, yes, Dyson, exactly. off, yes, so. all right 
Yeah. Mr. Jolof was there? Yes. <laughs> Has anybody told you you look like Mr. Jolof? No, I do not. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what do you think? He tells of TVC yeah. Connect. Don't you think Harry Tia looks like Mr. No, Jolof? No, I do not look like Mr. Jolof. <laughs> but uh, to, uh, to my next story, we have Game of Thrones Season 7 wrapped up um, um, this, we um, this week. Mm. Uh, we saw the very um, interesting ending. Uh, okay. And and the next season promises to be shorter and will and will start in 2019 actually. Is it confirmed? So, yes. Uh, because it's more or less like off and on late 2018, maybe 2019. Yeah, because they're going to they're going to wrap up shooting in the in, like towards the end of 2018. So we don't really know. And there's gonna, there's a lot of editing that goes into Game of Thrones. So um, hmm. we're going to have to wait and see. But fingers are crossed. People are ex excited and ex expectant of it. Of All right. The new Before season. we go on, we'll just take a short commercial break. And when we get back, we're still talking GOT. Come back. We're still talking uh, GOT. So, yeah, let's talk figures now. Yes, 12.7 million people tuned in to watch Game of Thrones. That's massive. The season finale. That is a lot of people. <laughs> that is massive. That's yeah, massive. Yeah, it was really good. It was a, it was okay. a really good finale. Okay. All right. Now, let's yes. move on to my favorite story today. Yes. The best story, I think. All right. <laughs> yes, America's Got Talent has gone into the quarterfinals. And our very own Kechi Okuchi, who is one of the, survivor, one of the sole survivors of the um, um, Susiliso um, yeah. crash of 20, crash. 2005, is still standing strong in wow. the competition yes wow um she did a performance of um, a cover of the katy perry song by the grace of god by the grace of god yes and she got like um lots standing, of love, ovation. Uh, standing ovation from the judges and yes yeah, so yeah she's she's doing she's doing a little she's doing well mel b was like you're inspiring mm. so Macau was like people need to know your story that is why you're here presently you're here. exactly yeah so um, it was a really it was a lovely performance from you know her. what happens yes. um, you know what happens when she her first performance and all that i was a bit skeptical i was like okay maybe you are playing the sentimentality card mm. we're being sorry and all of that and all of that but then i saw this performance I, 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 I got emotional. Yeah. You have to see this, okay? Let's <laughs> check out this performance of Kechi Okuchi. Responsibility to the people that lost loved ones in that plane crash. And it pushes me to do all the things that I do. I want to make them proud and I want them to see that, you know, this life that was saved on that day was not saved in vain. Kechi, I will always remember when we first met and you came out and you were shy and you weren't sure about, you know, whether you're a good singer or not. And the first time we heard you, I thought you were great. And then what's happened now? Tonight, you came out as the person you've always, I believe, wanted to be with your song choice, the lyrics, the performance. Um, you know, what Mel said about being an inspiration is absolutely true. I mean, I've got to know you, you know, behind the scenes, you are an adorable person. You are important in these days and ages when people need people like you as an inspiration. That's what you're doing. And I, I am so happy. I have so much respect for you. And I'm so happy the performance went great tonight. Thank you. That's it. That's it. All. We don't have anything to say <laughs> after this. Thank you very much, Harry. It was great having you. It was great having you. All right. Simon's head is there. Okay. But then let's move over to two other people with a guest. Um, their heads are all there. Yomi and Titi. Take it away. Yeah. It's such all a right. powerful story. Yeah, so powerful, powerful story and inspirational as well. I don't think there was a dry eye in the whole <laughs> stadium. You yeah. know, it was just Beautiful. amazing. Beautiful. But uh, up next, we have an amazing actor, Chika Chuku, <laughs> Nollywood actor, come singer, singing sensation. You probably <laughs> remember her best as a uh, Jumoke from Fuji House of Commotion, possibly, you know? Hey. And uh, she recently <laughs> made a return to the uh, music scene with the uh, release of her latest single, uh, Music from the Soul, from the album Lie, Live 
uh, Love and Leap. Yeah. And of course, he's joining us this morning. So what should we call you, Andrea or yeah. Ch uh, Chica? Chica. <laughs> Well, everybody calls me Chica. Even my husband calls me Chica. Oh, really? yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, Andre is my first name. Mm. And if you were raised in the 80s and you were Catholic, you were born and oh, yeah, baptized we, first. Yeah. yeah. So that became, so your, that's, that's your, your first that's your name. That's your baptismal name. That was also <laughs> my first name. So yeah. The, yeah. the traditional name came later. But um, I love my name. I like Chica. Chica. And it's short and simple. And I remember when I came into the industry, uh, the first time I saw KOK, he goes, what's your name? And I say, Chika Chuku. See, it's kind of like my name. Kanaya or Kanaya. It's a good name. Keep it. Don't allow people to change your mind. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Very nice. So, now, Fuji House of Commerce, that's a long time now. How many years yeah. ago was that? I was in Fuji House for seven years, so I don't know. Wow. And, um, yeah. And seven it ended, years straight. And it well, did it actually end? Before the later Maki we passed away, yeah. we had done like, I had done like two... Uh, two or three episodes okay. so there was a comeback for the mm -hmm. older children yeah. middle-aged children mm -hmm. and now older children yeah. and our older ones or elder ones <laughs> were now like grandparents and everything mm -hmm. and the unfortunate demise of the later Amakibe and I don't know where well as Fuji has I don't think we give up do no. we no. you know John myself um, <laughs> uh, Judorora, we're still family anyways mm. and all the other little kids when we Aww. see outside yeah. you see uh, 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 sister Jumi and when I see yeah. Ngozimosu, it comes even naturally to say mommy yeah. it's just simple or uh, rabu and all of that mm. we stay in touch yeah. okay. so we're still family it's but a, yeah. it does seem like you're abroad quite a lot though um, now, uh, what? Now? Don't come and pop <laughs> my no, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like you're you know, global, so yeah, you're global, you're, you're well, going around the world, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, hello, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Um, I live in Watford in a small in a small town called Watford in Hertfordshire with my husband, okay. Brian. And uh, Brian is Irish, so Ooh, okay. that's what that's our middle ground. Irishman. Yeah, and I went to school in England as well, so yeah. it kind of balances things okay. out. But yeah, you know. So let's talk about um, your movie career before we talk about the music. Mm -hmm. um, this caused a rift between you and your mother <laughs> some years back, <laughs> and I need you to tell us that story because of. <laughs> somebody else who's going through that challenge a young girl who wants to go into acting and you know looks like there's some clashes at home i love you mommy <laughs> wherever you want. uh yeah you know if you were raised again i keep saying nobody should calculate my age wherever you are <laughs> i'm still as young as you are yeah. uh back in the 80s if you know anything about entertainment and all of that you mm -hmm. would remember that outside of onye Winu and sonia kusu and all of those people you didn't have a lot of people who were doing great or yeah. good you had the drug influences you mm. had the gist of how people were prostitutes mm. and all of that so i think like every parent from that time had a dream which is your child is going to be a lawyer yeah or a, a doctor, doctor. <laughs> an accountant mm -hmm. you know some kind of big thing definitely not an actor singer who does that anybody <laughs> can be that yeah, yeah. And so when I finished high school, and anyway, all through high school, in short, for as long as I can remember, even as a little kid, uh, as a little kid, I did an advert for Beck's Biscuit by then. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and that's how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no idea. <laughs> so I have always been on TV, you know, and always had that going. But I think my mother thought it was something that would leave when I became older. Mm -hmm. And when I finished high school, I wanted this, you know, and I went and did A-levels, and I said to my mother, I want to act, this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. and she goes, you're going to school, and I said, I'm going to act, and there was that little riff for a little while, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and do it, and yeah. so I picked up a box, and my mother goes, if you walk out that door, it is without my blessing, and you ah. can't come back, oh, and wow. you know that pause. Did you walk out? I did. Hey. Oh, wow. But you know that pause when you think that security, a nice warm bed, hmm. you know, roof food. over your head, <laughs> yeah. food when you want it, any type. But I wanted this more, you know? Needless to say, it took me three months before I got to Lagos. The rest is a long story. Let's wow. just not go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, but so in a sense, against all odds, mm. you know, mm. this, you, you were able to get yourself in a place where you could act and do what you love. Yeah. Um, so there are probably some young people out there watching now. Mm. They're probably in a similar situation as you were with your mom. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice would you give them? Well, things are different now. Mm. 
-hmm. People were a bit more communal back in the day. I'm, I'm not saying that things are rough now, but the, I, I kind of get the feeling that things are rougher now. Mm. I might not suggest leaving home, mm. you know. Yeah. Things are a bit sensitive and tender. Mm. Yeah. So, but I would suggest you get somebody to speak to your parent, whether it be your mother or your father, and explain and find a way to inculcate it into what you can do. Mm. I have to stop you there. We have a clip of oh. something you've put together yeah. in the past. Okay. <laughs> Hey, ne, there is. please, speak English to me. If you leave this office now, you will remember that you're Igbo. I put up my money, Igbo. I'm my Delta. Hey, mbane. Hey, Igbo ni Igbo fifa. Okay. Sorry, madam. Please give me one um fan milk fantastic there. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so wow. you're, you're 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 a woman of many parts, and mm -hmm. one of the things that you're also known for is comedy because, yeah. mm -hmm. and it just comes out, it just flows, like yeah. it just mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. Like you're speaking in very correct English now, and then suddenly we're watching the clip. <laughs> I'm like, who is, who is, that? is that really her? I'm not Flawless sure. Igbo. Ah, wow. is again? Uh, Igbo, call Igbo. Which one will have you say now? Ah. Yeah. Oh, what are I say? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so we need to, you know, because my stomach is rumbling. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're hungry. Yeah, uh, I, I just, you see, you just said that and something just went. You just went yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens, it happens. Mm. Okay. But uh, not to worry, Chef Tolu has us covered. We need to move along to the kitchen now. Oh, okay. And see how far with that lasagna. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, yes. Lasagna. Our lasagna oh, is dear. ready. Lasagna a la tolu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice one to say. Yeah. Nice Thank you. Oh, dear me. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. So, yes. first, that's for you, Chika K. And, of course, we have fresh yo yogurt yeah. to go with that. All right. So, oh. Tolu, okay, so will you tell us uh, what you did here? Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm, Are you afraid? Tolu, I'm just yeah. looking. Very hot. Huh? Okay, oh, so wow. um, we have lasagna. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you have in it is the tomato sauce, minced meat, white sauce. Okay. Um, we made our white sauce from scratch, so I like oh, that. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we're um, on the flat lasagna sheet and mm -hmm. sweet corn. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's a little bit spicy. I brought it to Ninja a bit. Level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can have the pepper, you know, black okay. pepper and all of that. Ah, so it is really lasagna a la tolu. Ah, it's <laughs> really. Because you know this. Lasagna ah. with pepper. Yes, so. It's not and, like uh, I think we have some fresh yo here as yeah. well. So that's yeah. some yogurt. Go with yogurt that. Okay. Yeah. So please wow. go ahead, have a taste. Okay, so who are Still pretty hot. And as she is tasting the food, in fact, I'm, I'm so hungry right now. Uh, <laughs> a huge thank you to all our guests for coming on today's show. Of course, we want to say a big thank you to Payport oh, Food Stores for the groceries and Homely Angie for the kitchen accessories. Oh. And finally, for La, love you. Thanks for styling my hair. Louisa, this top is amazing. Thank you so much for that. All right, bye-bye for now. But we'll be back tomorrow for your Feel Good Friday show right here on TVC Entertainment. Your view is next. Bye. And we'll see you tomorrow.